Please be joined at this time by Coach Troy Hoff, coach of the uh, Eastside High School here in Georgia. Coach, uh, thanks for coming on with me. Appreciate you having me, Coach Parker. Uh, honored to be here. Yeah, yeah, excited to talk about this topic, you know, uh, working on admin, admin coach relationships or working with your administration, but kind of made that title that because you could look at it from the administrator's point of view or from the coach point of view. Um, you know, what I did, Coach, was, you know, when I kind of semi-retired, I've taken off on, a, you know, 10 or 12 different topics and tried to really study what good teams did with them and try to help others. And uh, this is one of them. You know, I think probably overlooked. Just, you know, everybody says they want to build relationships, and one of that group's got to be the admin, or, or if it's the admin, they got to build relationships with coaches. But I don't know that we're really talking about how we actually can do it, unless that comes natural to you. And it does come natural right. to some people more than others. I don't think there's stuff out there to genuinely help people understand things from their perspective. So really appreciate you coming on and working with this. Uh, you guys have had a really good program there for a while at Eastside. And, uh, you know, there's been some consistency there. And when there's and when there's some consistency, this is working well. And, and that's just, just a fact. So, um, you know, I, I broke it down when I studied what people were doing to have positive relationships uh, with admin and coaches, basically came down to three kind of core fundamentals or core values of trust and care and commitment. That There was a genuine trust back and forth between the admin and the coaches. They genuinely cared for the other one and cared about their success and they were committed to their success. So if you don't mind, talk a little bit about what you guys do, uh, foster this and maybe some of the things you've done over the years to help these I think it starts with, you You said it at the beginning, the consistency factor. Um, I've been blessed and fortunate to be in this place for 15 years, uh, five as head coach. I came in with uh, Coach Hurst um, in 2005, and we've had consistent leadership um, at the top at Eastside High School, and, and that's been um, a great experience. Uh, they've been allies to us. They're the first in our corner, and, and the succession of principals we've had and athletic directors have all fit in that. So, um, you know, the trust and the care and commitment has kind of come naturally. Now, that's not saying that that hasn't had to be built over time, but, um, you know, my current situation, my uh, AD came in when I got the head coaching job. So I've been with him for five years. Uh, and Dr. Davidson has a, a lot more experience than I do, um, working with T. McFerrin and, and uh, South Gwinnett and, and uh, coaching as well as the AD role. And then my principal at the top of it all, uh, Mr. Jeff Chur, uh, was our athletic director for a while. We started off teaching together in 2005. So we've had a strong relationship for a very, very long time. So when he became principal and um, in effect hired me, um, I already knew what I was getting into. Uh, and I, it was a huge reason for me to stay. And like I say, a no brainer. Uh, because of how effective a, of a leader he is and the respect I have for him. So um, I think the tough part and in, in part of this is, and in, in you've been in this situation where you've went into positions where you didn't have necessarily strong relationships with the people. Um, and again, Phil and I had to start out together, my AD, um, because he was new. But um, that, that consistency factor is definitely huge. Yeah, you know, I think if um... – you know, obviously, everybody that listens to this has got their own set of circumstances. You know, some people, it's their buddy that hired them. Uh, some people, their buddy hired them, and then they left, and now they're the other guy. And, you know, and sometimes it's just you just got the job. You know, you moved from two or three states over or whatever, and, and you just got the job, and you kind of inherit these guys. And, you know, I think there's inherited leadership, and then there, there's guys you took over, and they were already there, and then vice right. versa. There's times where I was the coach. You know, I actually had a ton of principals over the years for whatever reason. Right. Uh, and I got along with all of them, but it felt like I was still there. I was the consistent one. And the principal right. kept changing. And so, right. um, you know, but so when you work with several principals, as long as I was the head coach, I probably had five, six different principals, uh, which equated to one every two years. Ago. And, um, you know, when you have that many principals, you, you're going to get them all different personalities. Some of them, or would have been guys I would have hung out with personally, you know, just right. kind of were like me and some of them were total opposite, you know, but the reality is if you don't have that positive relationship, the team's going to suffer. So I feel like it's your job as a coach to make that good relationship possible, 
and then vice versa, it's their job as an admin to work with. So how yeah. and it, but what people always ask me is, you know, they say, well, coach, that sounds good, but how can I, you know, how can I, what if they don't have the situation you have and they don't have consistency, they don't have uh, guys that they started teaching with or guys that came in with mm -hmm. them that respect them. And, and I would say these three words, you know, you, and, and I don't mean them as lip service. No, you have to it. genuinely care about that principal and try to care about what they're trying to say. Maybe try to see it from their perspective. Try to, un, you know, take a few losses occasionally, maybe, you know, that you got to work with somebody yeah. because it's a two way street. And so many times in football coaching, especially, but really this is, this, this talk is really about all sports, but in football coaching, particularly, there's a lot of one way streets out there. If you know what I mean? Yep. A lot definitely. of people that, they want it. They want you to care about them, and you be committed to them, and you trust them. Right. But they may not be giving that stuff back to the basketball coach or to the baseball coach or to right. you know. We're all, and I mean, I I could go on a long rant about that. I'm going to choose not. Mm -hmm. But that Definitely. that is an issue I had as an AD, and I love football. Obviously, I know the most about football. I love football, but we we are all we kind of look at it how we want to look at it sometimes on these kids playing multiple sports and on working with these other sports and on working with the principal. And so I just want to remind anybody listening to this as they're hearing you talk about it, don't say to yourself, well, he's got his, he's got the same guy five years. That's not me. No, everybody has to deal with these things. It doesn't matter, you know, where you are. So what, um, what type of things would you advise somebody new? Because you took over five years ago and you inherited mm -hmm. a team that was already good. Uh, you, you were on the staff. You got promoted. So you didn't get a chance to come in brand new. What's some yeah. things that you fought through to, to try to show that you were there for everybody and not just football? Yeah. Well, and I think you kind of said it. I've, I've been in this situation, familiar with the people, but I still look at it as it has to continue. And, and, and that's still us together, you know, my admin team and me. And I need to continue to do these things, um, even though I got a past relationship. Um, if I don't carry these things out yearly, weekly, daily, then I, I'm going to lose that relationship, and and I I probably won't have their trust or their commitment. So I, I look at it as even even though I'm in this spot, the things I look at is I, I still have to treat it as an extension of the classroom. Um, and, and again, we we have a tendency as football coaches, I uh, I'll put I there to get tunnel vision and it, you know, in our area, the grind, the day-to-day -day of, of concerned about my area. And I think you said it best as an AD is seeing the big picture. Um, and I think as I've gotten older, grew up playing multiple sports that helped. Um, when I was on the college staff, we had a good relationship with the other coaches uh, in, in the other sports. And I, and I feel like I have that now at Eastside. So um, you know, spreading that out where we're all on the kind of same page and, and uh, able to help each other out, show support. But I think, you know, with, with the principal, um, you know, selling your program and, and working within their framework, um, you kind of said it too, you're going to have to take some losses. You're not going to get everything you want um, in even the best situations. And, and I've got friends, you've got friends that have some really, really great coaching situations. They still probably don't get everything they want. Um, no, they I don't. Think, it's no, never as good I, as you think. Whatever no, you think is going on at wherever else is never as right. good. Right. So you you got to be willing to take some concessions, and and this isn't mine, but um, I listen to Jocko a lot, and and just you know, um, extreme ownership of playing the long game, um, because if you're in it with this person for the long game, you know you're going to have to have some give and take, and um, you know I think that starts with being really reliable to them in the classroom. Um, and mm -hmm. taking care of your kids in the classroom. Um, and then a step further, uh, your staff. Um, my principal and I have a good relationship with that where he'll let me know if he has concerns. Uh, when it comes to hiring, we're on the same page. Um, I know what he's looking for. He knows what I'm looking for. And we know that that's got to have a, a, a mesh point of us being together on the same page. So it's our guy, not his guy or my guy. And uh, those are some of the things that I, I look at that, um, in situations I know with guys I've worked with and know those have created problems for them with administration. Mm -hmm. um, and we haven't even talked about financials yet. <laughs> so, yep. so when you look at those things of um, having trouble hiring people or, or not being on the same page or um, the principal not trusting 
that the people you might be bringing him to possibly hire can do the job in the classroom. Um, that's usually where um, some friction can occur. Well, exactly. And, and everything you're talking to, even when we get into money, the money can be part of commitment, part of trust. Part right. Of, you know, are they committed to you? But do they trust that you are going to use that money in this way? Do they trust that you can, they can take your word for hiring so-and-so and he's going to yeah. be an asset to the school? Do they know you care about the whole school? Are you really committed to the whole school? You know, and so the principal is asking those three things, even if it's subconscious, even if he has never thought or he or she has never thought of these things like I got them written on this board. He is he or she is thinking those three things every time you open your mouth about yeah. something like football. And yeah. if you come and, and if and I know I really like take pride in these things being for all sports, but I want to talk to the football coaches on this because they do tend to be the worst. And I was one of them, so I can make fun of them. But you know, we you just got to make sure you are not in this world where you literally only care about if the football team wins, if we're on this and you have looks like, at least looks like you don't care about anything else. I'll be honest right. with you, coach. I know thousands of football coaches and I don't know any of them that don't care. No, no. I'm, they, right. they do care right. about the other sports. They do Definitely. care about the, they do care. I do know some of them that are horrible at showing you know what I mean? Like they don't really – it just comes across like they don't care about anything but what they got going on. And that's that kind of gets you into the next thing, which is what are some ways you can build relationships with these people? This is – and truthfully, of course, this is going to be true for insert any relationship. But mm -hmm. I think it's different when you're an admin because you got to remember, if you're talking to the principal specifically, that's the guy in the building that's the most likely to be uh, not safe next year for a job. Now, usually they get come brought back, but they don't have the same tenure. Head football coach is another person that a lot of times can be out real quick. So you guys should build that trust there. You know, I mean, have that common bond. Take, you know, and you see the last one there, it says take the loss occasionally. And, and I'll start with that one because we've already brought it up. Coach, how many people do you know, and I'll obviously won't name any names, but they didn't get a job they wanted, and they all fit into two categories. They handled it correctly or they handled it incorrectly. And, and <laughs> yeah. if they handle and, – and it always yep. comes back to get you either way. You know, right. if you don't get the job you wanted and you handle it correctly, you know, you take the loss. Or maybe right. in this case for what we're talking about, you want so-and-so as your defensive coordinator – principal says no well you got yep. two options you can take that loss and say you know I hate that but I trust you I care about this school I'm committed to this school so I'm going to shut up about it yeah and then the next time you need something you tell the principal hey man you know remember last time I had to kind of not get so and so yep. I really need this one you know you try to take that loss and make it a positive how many people do you know that can't do that, Coach? I mean, they just can't do right. it. they got to make it into the biggest thing ever. And, and so what are some things you would do or, or things that come to mind as I'm saying that? Because I don't even know if there's a question there, but what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, and I think, you know, along with taking, taking the loss occasionally, um, and you might look at it personally as a coach is taking a loss, of maybe doing some things you don't want to do because mm -hmm. you said it and it, it's not an ego thing, but the head football coach in, in a school, a lot of times is a, a higher priority, a higher spotlight position. It's mm -hmm. just kind of reality of the state we, we work in. So um, a lot of times people are looking at what you're doing and how you react to leadership and uh, how you carry out your assignments um, and kind of the tempo you're able to set with the rest of the staff, not just the coaches, sometimes it's the entire building. Um, because we've all probably been there where the principal's gonna get a question of, why did coach so-and-so not have to do this or do yep. this, but we do. And, yep. and I know, you know, they have to be conscious of that. And I need to understand that he's gonna ask me to do things. And, you know, for me to be a good soldier and, and do my part. And, and I don't have a problem doing that. Um, because I know, and again, this is our relationship. I know he's taken care of me with guys mm -hmm. and he's trusted me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there's been times I've been straight honest with him with things I didn't agree with. Um, it, it wasn't, it didn't end with me drawing a line in the sand. Uh, and I think that goes back to what we were just saying. 
you need to be very, very careful with that when you don't necessarily agree. And, and this has led to guys either being fired or parting ways um, mm -hmm. a lot many, of times. Many, many, many guys. There's an issue that it, it's, it's number one outside of money. Um, but that is usually the issue of um, the coach, you know, right or wrong, um, it's an issue that, you know, he's drawn a line in the sand in and you can't get beyond it. And so um, when you do get to the next issue um, and it doesn't go your way, now you're looking at, well, now I'm 0-2. You know, he's, he's ahead two to nothing now. And, and I didn't really get over the last one. So um, I think you need to be careful with that. And, and I think some of that gets into, um, you know, Coach Hurst and I talked about this a lot what are you willing to live with and work with at the program you're at? And, and if there are too many of those things where you don't agree on, um, then it's probably not going to work. Right. Uh, that, that might be a situation for both of you where um, it's not going to be productive. You said at the beginning, you know, successful programs that win lots of football games, uh, everybody's in alignment with the same mission and vision. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there might be, you know, little discrepancies along the way, but everybody's on the same page for the most part. Um, like we always talk about, it's hard enough to win games on the field the way it is. Uh, everything outside of that makes it even more difficult. Well, I think people forget, you know, half the teams lose every week. Uh, teams that work hard lose. Teams that go 0 and yeah. 10 work hard. Yeah. Uh, it's a common mistake. I've been, I've been on one of those. Yeah. <laughs> and, you worked hard and, you worked, <laughs> and you worked hard, didn't you? You I mean, worked really. You know, yeah, I, I mean, this attitude that working hard means you're going to win is just losing. Yeah. And this attitude that, you know, things aren't going to be problems at all schools is ludicrous because whatever you think the right. best school in Georgia is, they got their set of problems too. But I'll tell you, Coach, I love this topic because uh, as, as many people would not – well, I'll rewind that. People would put this way down the totem pole of Zoom clinics they want to listen to. Let's be honest. Right. They want right. to hear about what we ran. We used to score – we scored 40 points a game in my last few years at Pickens. They yep. want to know what plays we ran. They want to know what butt sweep. They want to know about what we did on defense, what we what we did in the kicking game, how we punted. They want to know how yep. we passed pro all this other crap that all is the same. Honestly, we didn't tell them anything different than the other year. Right. It just worked better. But what the, what they don't know is I changed principles five times, and I got along with all of them. And right. because of that, I could hire, get hired, folks hired. I could get things taken care of financially. I could do things without having to um, – make the principal look bad or whatever, because I think you brought right. something up so big earlier when you said, you know, somebody's going to go to that principal and say, how come coach uh, didn't have to do X, Y, or Z? Well, when they do that, the principal can answer that two different ways. You know, the principal can really say, well, you know, football, whatever. <laughs> or he yeah. can say, you know, I know you don't probably see it, but coach is like the first guy here every day. He's done this and this and this for me. And I've already met with him. We've already given him this information because he really wished he could have been here, but he can't be here right now. You know what I mean? There's a way to answer yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. If, if you can show you take up for that principle instead of walking around like, well, they ain't going to fire me. I'm the damn football coach. You know, like, yeah. even if that's true. You know, when I feel like when I was at Pickens, I, I, we had won enough and I was the AD and all that. I mean, they were. I never did feel like they could fire me, but I also didn't right. really need to tell everybody that. <laughs> yeah, you know no kidding. I mean? like, it's it's and, different and I, if you feel that than than yeah. letting everybody else out outside of that circle know that. Yeah, I think. But the reason, you know, there was just no reason not to be humble and nice, and so that's why I got these five things up here because I think you don't have to be best friends with these principals, but you need to get to know them. Assume yeah. they're on your team. Don't always make it out us versus them. You know, assume they're be honest with them. Go and say, hey, you know, Mr. So and So, Miss So and So, I really need this one thing and then when they and, and think about it from their point of view because if they're giving you if you're going in there asking not teach all day how's that going to look for them when they have to tell everybody else why you're not teaching all day so at least right. try to understand how, how they're going to feel and then when they do need something you need to be there for them and then like I said occasionally when you got to let the volleyball team use the gym instead of you one day why make such a big deal about it Say, hey, let's, let's be team players here. Let's help out. Because you can always later say, hey, we always work with the volleyball team. You know, I right. mean, that is more powerful than you looking like you're somebody big bowing up on the volleyball team or the principal or whoever. Right. So many think, guys, Coach, have lost their job because of these things. 
Oh, no doubt. I think the other dynamic in that is, and as a coach, you're going to find this out real quick and know it, is what your admin or your principal's feeling about athletics and football really, really is. Um, whether they're a, a, a leader that values the, the extracurricular and the athletics, or if it's just a kind of a second, secondary thing that's out there that they have to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a difference in how you approach it too, where mm -hmm. you may have to educate that principal a little mm -hmm. bit more on what's actually happening in your program. Um, like I said, I'm fortunate with, with Jeff Chur, you know, he played for Robert Davis and gets it and um, doesn't, doesn't ever suggest or, or critique what we're doing schematically, um, those kind of things, but he has an understanding of football and how it helped him. So um, we have that bond and that trust and, and he sees how, how well my guys work, our staff. So that was an obstacle that I didn't have to deal with. Um, but I know a lot of guys that, that work for principals mm -hmm. that have no experience with the game, and, and it, that makes it a lot harder for them. And, you know, my opinion on that, though, Coach, although it would be way better to have somebody that understands, it is your job as the head football coach. You ask for this job. Hundreds yep. of people apply for this job. If you, if you quit tomorrow at Eastside, 100 people apply for that job. You know, when It'll I quit. Be, all without me. You know, so <laughs> yep. so it's a job people want. Let's not make yep. it out like you're, you're so in this sad situation. You right. know, it's a job people want. You ask for it. If tomorrow your principal leaves and you get one that knows nothing about football, you still need to feel like it's your responsibility to kind of work with them. Now, this doesn't mean that at a certain point down the road you pick your battles and you pick one and it doesn't work and you got to go work right. somewhere else. That's kind of not – that's so that goes without saying for this course, if that makes sense. Definitely. We're, we're trying Definitely. To that goes without saying. But we're talking about in this in the stage of we got to make this work. And I think some of us are guilty of making it work with your current principal. We're good with the guys like that. Yep. But when it's somebody different, we don't see it as our responsibility to educate them, to teach them, to to be there for them, to help them understand how important extracurriculars are or how important that this can be for the school, you know? And so, I mean, I couldn't agree more coach. I think we got to take that. And again, so many people have lost their job, not understanding this. No, but not many, not near as many have lost their job, not knowing how to run buck sweep as have lost oh, no, their no. job, understanding this. And, and yet it, it I still applies. get asked way more about buck sweep. Funny how that <laughs> no, works. All the time. And it's, and it'll probably, you know, I think we're just, we're talking about the principal, but admin in general, I, yep. I deal directly with principal and, and athletic director, but our other two admin have been great as well. And, you know, one's curriculum instruction, one's testing, and I'm still in the classroom for, you know, teaching four classes a day. Um, so, again, it, it's them as well because um, when you look at the academic side, our sole purpose with our kids, uh, those people play a huge role in helping take care of our guys and get them what they need. Right, and don't and don't wait until some you need something to be there right. for those people either. Like those APs, uh, mm -hmm. your AD. All, I mean, get them a get them a collar shirt. Give them, you know, write them a thank you note. Get a kid to write them a thank you note. Think of something you can do when nothing is going on, when you want nothing from them. Right, and just do it for them because you are inevitably going to have to come talk to them about this or that. But you know, I, I couldn't agree more, Coach. Uh, what what else have you done at your school or what have you seen other people do? I just brought up giving out shirts, but what is yeah. other things you can do to uh, build positive relationship between the administration and the coaches? I think it starts with my staff as well. Cause um, almost all of us are in the building as teachers where, you know, number one, I tell them you, you got to do your job in that building. That's where you spend the majority of your time. Um, we all love football. Um, I'd love to do it all day long too, but um, you were hired to do a job in the classroom as well. And I think um, that has gone a long ways um, with building relationships with our full admin team, as well as department chairs, because um, they know they can trust our guys. They know that they're doing their job in the classroom, not just with the football players. Um, and then I do have a couple coaches that, that coach multiple sports. So that kind of reaches mm -hmm. out to more kids, which is very, very common in, in schools our size that we're, we're talking about. Um, so, you know, that when they come to us, when I say us, anybody on our staff, um, I want the admin to 
believe that we're the most reliable people they could come to to get a job done, that we're going to consistently deliver and do our job um, at a high level for the kids and for our school. And once they know that and they trust us um, that we're executing those things at a high level, that, that just opens up everything for you. Absolutely, Coach. Just such a good answer. And I hope people that are watching this, you know, we'll get some people obviously in Georgia that know about your school and all that, but, but there's some that don't. And I hope they can see why the consistency of this has so much more to do with the success of the whole program. You know, I saw somebody tweet something the other day that said, you know, y'all need to be chasing administrators instead of chasing players or something. And it, was, it was cute. It was funny. But yeah. there's some truth to that. If you can get in the right situation, you, you can work with these players. Uh, but if you struggle with this, it's really not going to matter how good you are with the players. You know, I'm not going to name names, but I could throw out some good names of some damn good coaches that, that got run off because they just yep. couldn't get this – uh, figured out. Um, so give let's, we, this doesn't have to be about administration. I just like this question. What's something you guys have made a mistake with in the last five years that you wish you'd have handled different that, you know, you learned from and moved and, you know, moved on from. Made a mistake. I don't know. There's lots of them coach. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. We'd be, we'd be here a couple hours. Hey, me naming this this could be a long, long session. Yeah. Um, you know, I think maybe making things too complicated as coaches at times, I can't, you know, there's, there's a lot of situations that I, that I could look at, but um, um, sometimes, and we try to be, you know, I, we try to pride ourselves on being, you know, as, as efficient as we possibly can be with our time and continuously looking at how we can get better. And, um, you know, I think when I look at some things, we've overthought them um, mm -hmm. instead of going, you know, the simple plan is the easiest one to execute. You know, uh, if, if your kids are thinking too much, they're not going to play fast. And mm -hmm. we, we've kind of, you know, been on that for five years, you know, uh, you know, want our kids playing as fast as we can. Well, that also applies to us as coaching too. And in, in what we're doing, we want to be able to move and be efficient. So I think sometimes getting in me as a head coach, getting bogged down in, in some details that when I look back at it, they weren't that important. Uh, things that I've, I've probably spent too much time on that I could have been spending time on something that was way more beneficial to the program. I think as I've gotten older in my role, I've gotten better at that. Um, one area where I have gotten better with is delegating to my assistants, um, the off the field. On the field is easy. Uh, you know, I, I'm a firm believer, and I, I hired these guys. I wanted to coach ball. That's why they're here. I've been with some of them for 15 years. So, um, But I think off the field, uh, me doing a better job of giving them more, uh, you know, more of a look into the big picture, uh, helping them grow and develop, but also helping our program. Them taking a little more ownership and stuff, it, it helps all of us. No, that's right, Coach. Um, well, what are what is some advice you would have for somebody who aspires to be a head coach? You know, I made a comment earlier about 100 guys apply for your job. Uh, it. it I have to remind myself that time at times when I was coaching and now as an AD and then moving on now where I'm just kind of consulting, reminding people that, you know, if they interview five people for a job, they probably didn't interview 95 that applied. Right. You know, it's just really an honor and a privilege to have the job that you have. And I know you know that, but there's so right. many people that aspire to do it. Uh, hopefully, if they're watching this, it's because they aspire to be good at it and not get the title. But what's some advice you would have for somebody that aspired to be a head coach? What's something they can be doing now that would help them? Um, well, I, I think you hit it. Most of, most of us, all of us, you know, earlier in our careers, younger, we're, we're focused on schematics, our position, um, probably coaching multiple positions over the years to gain a better grasp of whatever side of the ball you're on. Um, if you could get to the other side that you're not familiar with, I think that would help a lot. Uh, in my case, I've never coached defense, but, but I've always been involved in special teams. So, you know, expanding, you know, your, you know, area of expertise is huge. Uh, more than that is the off the field stuff. And I was fortunate to be with some really good head coaches starting in college um, you know, all the way through working for Coach Hurst for 10 years. Um, he made me his assistant head coach and, and didn't hide anything from me. 
Um, and, and that was a huge advantage for me in, in moving into my role. Um, I look at it, if I'd have got a couple of the jobs earlier in my career, um, I, I would not been near as ready at all. No, no way. Um, and I can honestly look back and say that, uh, being young here, getting stupid, thinking, you know, I, thinking I knew everything and how I would do it. And this is, you know, why is my head coach doing this? Uh, now I know, <laughs> now, now I have that answer of why he would, you know, a cuffin would just look at me and, and, and say, you'll understand someday. Um, the off the field stuff is definitely more important. Um, it, you know, it starts with the organization. Everything from there is, is relationships um, and, and with, with your staff, uh, with the administration, um, and then extending that from your players to your entire program. Um, but I think learning as much of the off the field stuff um, as you possibly can and working with you know, your current head coach and coaches you know that are in that position right now to get a window into that world, um, to, to gain some experience there um, so that, you know, when that day does come, um, you know, and, and they're asking you about your touchdown club and, and your organization with them and your, your communication, that that's not the first time that that's ever come up. Yeah, that's right, Coach. I mean, there's not a right answer to that question. That's a huge question. Yeah, like that. that's a lot. <laughs> but, but I would say that's as right of an answer as you can get because, you know, I, my personal opinion, and it's, it's an educated opinion, would be that you can't, you can't learn to be a head coach until you are. No, you're right. But, but there are some things you can do ahead of time to make that transition smooth. I, and, uh, and, and so many people want to be a guru of calling the play or thinking they know everything about stopping on defense. And the reality is it's all of this stuff, culture, right. team, team building, working with admin, working with parents, booster club. It, it, it's all of those things that will probably get you run off if this is not a successful time for this first – you get this first head coaching job. It will probably not be what you called on third down. It yeah, probably probably won't be. I mean, no, I've never heard people get called in. Maybe at the elite schools you made a bad third or fourth down call yeah. and they fire you. But, man, I, that is really, really rare. It is way more likely that the parents will not like you that principal won't like you, things like that. And it won't be because you didn't try. Keep this in mind. We kind of end with this as people are listening to this. I believe, and Coach, you can back me up on this, but I just believe that most all coaches, 99 out of 100, are trying hard to do all these things right. They just suck at showing people. <laughs> they just yeah. don't. So, that, for example, this is not about recruiting. You guys have had some good players over the years. We have. But you get parents say things like the coach isn't pushing their kid or promoting their kid. That's right. a bunch of garbage. Every coach is promoting their kid. Some right. of them are just better than others at explaining to those parents and showing them how they're doing. And so what I'm, what I'm kind of passionate about now in my new world is helping folks understand how to go from I'm already doing this stuff. I'm already hoping I'm working good with the administration. But let right. me give you some tools on how to show them that you yeah. can help them. Because, again, this topic gets more people fired than about any other topic we talk about. No doubt. Uh, and it's, you know, it's a lot of communication, but you said it. Most of the, the good football coaches that I know are doing these things, mm -hmm. and they do them at a high level. And then it's, it's uh, the question of, and you brought it up, how do you show that? Because there are there are so many things that that come back to that first slide that you put you put up today. If you pause that slide and put it up there, we probably could have talked about everything, and we did everything you put after that linked yeah. off of that slide. I mean that that's it. I mean you you can't you can't simplify it any more than that. But then it is it it it's showing you know the people in your program and the admin um, how you're doing that, and, and sometimes that's difficult. Uh, you, you, the recruiting one, you brought up a hot topic. Um, and, and again, as highly recruited as a state we're in, it's real easy to compare school A to B to C with this player compared to that player. Um, and, and a lot of times, well, not a lot of times, 99% of the times, people don't know the whole story behind why this kid got an offer and why this one did it. Uh, so there, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that. 
And I just think, you know, and to some degree, that's a battle we'll probably never win with some parents. Probably but not. there is a way, but there is a way to do the best job you can do of showing people that yes. you're doing these things. I remember years ago, and I'll kind of end on this, we're off topic a little bit, but this will pertain to somebody listening. Um, years ago, when it first started those recruiting expos and Facebook was going on, you know, whatever it was. So we went to recruiting expos in 2003, four or five, you know, way back yep. then, there was no Facebook. Yep. Well, then by 2008 or nine or 10, I'm the head coach now, and we're going to one of these recruiting things. We take a picture, we put it on our Facebook and says, great day at the, you know, so-and-so recruiting fair, talk to 110 schools. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, not only did we get a ton of good positive publicity for that, all these other coaches got criticized because they didn't go. Hell, they were sitting <laughs> right beside me. They, they were all in the same room. They yeah. were right beside me. But it yep. never entered their mind to promote that they were there. So right. parents just assumed they weren't. And, and, and it was just a debacle for now. Now that's not as big a deal because it's a little more established that people do that. Now it may right. be oversaturated with the pictures and all, to be honest. But but it's just interesting that what are you doing to show parents, to show administration? Yeah. What are you doing to help? Because we, I mean, my thought process then was we were already, we've been doing this whole ever since I started coaching. They were yep. doing this in the 1990s, but the parents yep. didn't know about it. Now we let them in on it. And all of a sudden, they give you the benefit of the doubt a little more. So yeah. what are the new things like that? And that's kind of what you need to ask yourself if you're listening to this. What are the things that I can show my principal, my AD, my assistant principals, my parents, whatever? What are some things I can show them that I'm doing to help? Because it ain't all about them just doing it because you said so anymore. You're yeah. going to have to show them. Yeah. Um, I mean, but – Coach, tell me anything else you know you got or, or anything, you know, where anybody can find you if they got questions, and then we'll get you out of here. Yeah, um, I'm on Twitter. Uh, I think you – on uh, when you sent out the the tweet for this, yeah. uh, my address is there. But, yeah, DM me with with questions. I, I, I'm i going to tell you right here, I don't have all the answers. Uh, I've been blessed and fortunate to work with a lot of really, really great people, um, and we've had good players. Uh, that, that that helps. <laughs> it always <laughs> that, does. That's, that's probably where it starts is as good as we think we are. Uh, no, we've got good kids that work hard. Um, and, and like I said, fortunate to work with some really, with some pros, some people that do their job and, and, and have a lot of respect for the process of going through it. So, um, you know, I've got a great staff and, uh, you know, we love talking ball, love working through this. And, and um, you know, I think making this a priority um, has helped, helped me, you know, and I look back at the, you know, the last three years, I'll say, you know, year one and two is still, you know, year two is better than year one as, as a head coach. Um, but, but moving forward, um, I find myself, you know, working less on the schematics of, of football. Uh, and I enjoy the leadership part of it. That, that's, that's something I probably spend more time on than anything. Um, and, and, and a lot of that deals with, um, as a leader, how you work with others. So, um, Great topic, Coach, and I, I just appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Well, thanks again for, for taking some time to join me. And, uh, you know, those of you who don't know, aren't familiar with Coach's program, maybe you're across the country, you know, the guys, those guys play hard. They're really good. They're well coached. Uh, he's a good one to learn from. So connect with him if you can. And, Coach, maybe we'll get you back sometime. Anytime, Coach. I appreciate it, man. I had a lot of fun. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Take care.